Thanks for joining us. This is Notepad. We're doing a special segment called Pantau, Kerajaan Baru, or the monitoring of the new government. My name is Ibrahim Sani. We're going to be unpacking some of the items, not just in terms of the activities that the government's doing, but of course, more importantly, the policies that they are planning to execute. In fact, some of them have already been announced. In the studio with me is Dr. Oh Yi San, uh, the Principal Advisor at uh, the Pacific Research Centre. Uh, Yi San, maybe let's talk a little bit more about some of the uh, uh, vibe that you've been getting uh, from uh, the postulations that some of the ministers have uh, made. Uh, in particular, say for instance, the Communications and Digital Minister, uh, Fami Fazil, saying that he is uh, pursuing uh, the review of uh, the uh, 5G policy, uh, the uh, clamping down on some of the more stoking, racially stoking statements or, or, or comments that is being made by social media. That's one item. Another policy that needs to be looked at is, of course, uh, the uh, legality of it. Uh, Dr. Azalina, uh, uh, YB Azalina was already saying that uh, the separation of, say, the DPP, sorry, the public prosecution and the Attorney General is going to be done. Uh, there's so many policies that is going to be uh, chased after. What's your vibe and feel on all these uh, policy changes? Well, because uh, Anwar was leading, in a sense, a uh, reformist uh, troop into the government, right? But nowadays, of course, tempered by some other coalition partners in this government. So there is a lot of popular expectation that uh, some of these uh, policies, which might not have been working, should be abolished, and a new one should be uh, adopted. You mentioned, for example, uh, Azalina's uh, suggestion as to uh, separate the roles of uh, the Attorney General, who is like a legal advisor to the government, right? Mm. On the one hand, and the public prosecutor, who is to charge people criminally on the other hand. I think that has uh, long been uh, called for by uh, both uh, the lawyers as well as uh, those the legal scholars. Um, and, and that is important because very often, if you don't do that, then uh, some of these uh, criminal charges could be politicized. Uh? The government of the day, uh, sometimes they could instruct the Attorney General to, uh, well, shall we say, or, well, perhaps not instruct, but uh, suggest strongly to the Attorney General to charge certain person for criminal offences because, for, for example, they are political uh, rival. Mm. If you have a truly independent public prosecutor, uh, which is, uh, for example, not taking orders uh, from the government of the day, perhaps the situation could be better. But how to structure that properly such that that public prosecutor is also uh, accountable in a sense to the public at large, I think that is the tricky part. Huh? Not accountable to the government of the day, but accountable to the people at large. How to do that? Uh, I think Azalina would have to think about it very carefully. Um, as to, uh, for example, the YB uh, FAMI's uh, uh, review of this uh, 5G rollout, that I think is also very uh, timely because over the last two years, uh, as the whole world has been uh, adopting uh, 5Gs, we have still been debating how should we go about doing it. Do we uh, give it as a monopoly to a, shall we say, semi-government company? And then that semi-government company sort of pajak the whole thing and then, uh, mm. and then subdivide it to various companies? Mm. Or do we have it uh, perhaps uh, to encourage more competition, huh? to have, um, for example, auction, uh, auctioning uh, the, the 5B spectrum, yeah. spectrums out to maybe two or three uh, competitors such that... Uh, the public uh, could enjoy better service and so on. All this needs to be, uh, you know, ex as we say, re-examined instead of simply let uh, this uh, uh, DNB uh, kept on uh, just rolling out as such. Uh, my my yeah. issue is this. Uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, some items, mm -hmm. there is no such, no, th there's little uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, retrospective work that is needed. Separation of AG and public prosecutor, people think about it as whatever that is done is mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. done. Now we move ahead to a better infrastructure. But items like the 5G, for instance, uh, billions of ringgit have already been spent. The DNB has already been structured. Uh, the telcos have already bought uh, the structures of into BM, DNB. I don't know whether the transactions have changed hands or not in terms of cash or any other uh, mm. uh, 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 considerations. And to unwind these kind of things, not only does it incur cost, it's also incur incurring time. Uh, under the previous administration, we've seen a lot of things have been done. So in terms of policy direction, some is good in terms of it doesn't need retrospective kind of outlook. But now, some things are done already. Now what do we do? Do we need to unwind? 
Yeah, and and what is the impact on that? I, I, I mean, we're using yeah, the, the I, DNB as an example, yeah, but yeah. yeah, the notion is that. Well, I, I, I think uh, there, there must be some sort of uh, uh, some sort of advice from the private sector huh? because uh, this, con I mean, as well as from the consumers, uh, because this concerns uh, not only these uh, large uh, telco companies. Uh, we as consumers, we would like uh, better uh, services. At, at, at first, when DNB was rolled out, uh, it was almost like a black box operation. There was not much consultation. Granted, it was during pandemic, but still, uh, apparently, most of the industry, uh, industry players are not happy. Uh, consumers were in the dark as to how they could benefit from that. I, I think you do need to have uh, some sort of consultations uh, uh, ongoing. Uh, at the end of the consultation, you might think that, uh, well, we don't need to uh, roll back, but uh, let's see how it uh, goes. But most, uh, sorry, more fundamentally, I think this company, uh, this country would uh, well would need to act as a company because we have a lot of competitors uh, out there nowadays uh, during the pandemic when everybody's life was difficult uh, it's quite amazing that some of our neighboring countries vietnam indonesia and so on they i wouldn't say they make use of the opportunity but it will appear that they really accelerated tremendously such that nowadays vietnam's uh, gdp surpass our gdp you, you could imagine, 20 years ago, we could never imagine that. Huh? We thought of Vietnam as a country in need, uh, how to help them and so on. Now they are surpassing us. Is there something we could learn from their investment policies, for example? Why are they so popular in terms of attracting foreign investments? Uh, I think that we also need to uh, look into. Uh, here. Okay, one hmm. item that we need to also look into are the roles that the economy minister and hmm. the minister of the trade and industry uh, has to do. These two individuals are rather famous, uh, very well known in terms of uh, what they can and cannot do, uh, what they can and cannot deliver. Um, Rafizi, leading the economy ministry, has already made uh, a big statement saying that uh, middle income trap is a big uh, issue that he wants to tackle. By the way, this is not new. Every single economy minister or ministries, ministries that's associated with the economy has been talking about this. It's very hard to do. That's why people are not able to pull this off, one. Another one is MITI. Uh, you're talking about uh, pulling investors coming in. Is there a new re rethinking strategy? What are the apparatuses within MITI to help uh, Zafrul, Tengku Zafrul, in terms of trying to make it work? We've got Matrik, we've got uh, Maida, we've got so many other investors, uh, KL, for instance, so many. And it seems like some of the items are a bit, uh, how should I say, uh, um, uh, contradictory to one another. <laughs> you want high income nation, yeah. you want low base production. How does these two ministries talk to each other and then later on talk to the cabinet and, and Anwar's uh, administration well, in order to make this work? Well, there seems to be a lot of uh, uh, incongruency in terms of what needs to be done. Well, of, of course, uh, Rafizi, as, uh, the, essentially he's the economic planning minister because he's in charge of uh, the EPU, the economic planning uh, unit. And I can think of no more qualified person than uh, him because he has always been known as a policy wonk uh, and the way he, he speaks and so on would, uh, would be peppered with a lot of this uh, very, uh, very, very high, uh, high power terms and so on. Um, so how could Malaysia get out of uh, the middle income trap? Uh, I think that has actually been thought out uh, many years ago during the Najib uh, administration. Uh, they also had uh, quite a number of uh, panels uh, going through uh, what, what kind of restructuring of Malaysia's economy is uh, needed. I think uh, the, the main thing is, of course, uh, moving from, uh, as you mentioned, this uh, sort of low-skill, labor-intensive industry to more, uh, well, very high-skill and very value-added uh, industry. The question then becomes, how do you do that, right? And that implementation part is the job of, uh, what's his name, uh, Tengku Zafrud as the, the new trade and industry uh, minister. Uh, it, it is, of course, uh, quite nice that, uh, you know, during the first day of work, he has already been flown to, uh, to, to Middle East to try to uh, witness some signing of cooperation. Um, I, I think the Middle East, China, and of course the traditional West uh, will still remain our main source of foreign uh, investments. But again, the question is, why Malaysia? Why not uh, Vietnam, right? Why not uh, Indonesia? And why not some other Southeast Asian countries? So that I think we, we, we still need to figure out.
The, the, the common arguments mm. that mm. are presented uh, is that we have good infrastructure, good roads, good rail, a good flight. Uh, we have uh, a rather small in terms of geography. Uh, you know, I mean, if you think about Sunanjong, it's pretty small. You know, uh, uh, it's just three hours, four hours to Penang JB from KL, that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, we're central in terms of our ports, either on this side, on that side, or southern. Uh, it's, it's all there. Uh, English command is high. But it seems like these properties that we have is no longer valid considering what Vietnam and Indonesia is offering. So you're right. What is the new value proposition that we can attract? One item before you start comment, mm. I, I just need to share with you on this. One VC that I spoke to in Malaysia, he went to Singapore. People are not talking about Malaysia at all. They're not even talking about the poor things about or the bad things about Malaysia. It was just not mentioned. That's in Singapore, VC. Uh, in Middle East, uh, some of the investors there, I met one person uh, 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 came on my show. He was talking about the idea of them doubling down on Vietnam and Indonesia. Again, Malaysia is not on the radar. So instead of talking about Malaysia being good or Malaysia being bad, Malaysia is not mentioned. It is not in the thought of mind of uh, international investors. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I think one crucial factor, which perhaps you hinted at a bit, uh, it, it's also human resources. Huh? Um, you, you see, for, for, for international investors to come to Malaysia, they want to set up factories and so on. But then they most likely will employ uh, their, their, their workers from Indonesia and from Vietnam. Then the next question becomes, why don't I go straight to Vietnam or to Indonesia, right? So... The, do, do, do we have uh, adequately uh, skilled uh, workers, for example? That, that goes, of course, beyond uh, Zafru. That goes to our Human Resources Ministry, our Education Ministry, and, and so on. So it is important for Anwar to make sure that uh, his ministers could work in so-called clusters, right? So let's say Zafru, the um, uh, Human Resources Ministers, the Education Minister, and perhaps Rafizi, could uh, have uh, some sort of a committee or some sort of cluster working together to make sure that uh, indeed uh, we, for example, don't need to um, import so many foreign uh, workers. We have adequate, uh, highly skilled workers to work in uh, the factories and various other facilities which uh, investors are likely to set up. Uh, and then the other thing is also how do we, I cannot say prevent, but discourage uh, our own uh, investments from going out. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, when we go to Australia and so on, you see a lot of Malaysian developers developing Perth and Melbourne and so on, which is nice, put our name on the world map and, and so on, even London. We just got back from Battersea. It, it's, it's true. Um, but imagine if some of these investments were to be made uh, locally, um, well, perhaps uh, that could help also. But then uh, that, that would mean... But it's of all course, about the Delta, yeah, Asian. Yeah. If you can invest there and get more money there, wh why would you True. not do it? I mean, <laughs> you know, everybody's chasing bottom line. Hang on. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll go for one short break. When we come back, we'll discuss a little bit more with Dr. Oh A. San uh, of the Pacific Research Centre. We'll be right back after these messages. Thanks for staying on with us. I have with me in the studio Dr. Oh A. San uh, of Sabah, actually. Uh, uh, we want to bring in some of the, uh, the the items that you mentioned earlier. These clustering that we, you spoke of, we've seen some of the hints. Um, Anwar was mentioning that Zaid Amid is looking to a few cl clusters as the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, including that of, uh, uh, say, for instance, disaster management and many more. Uh, also, he has uh, made some announcements saying that Dr. Fadilah, the other uh, Deputy Prime Minister that we have, is looking to developments, both urban and rural mm -hmm. and try to minimize the gap between the two mm -hmm. and more importantly because Dr. Fadila is a, is a rep from GPS uh, we're looking at how the developments can be further done in Sarawak and perhaps even Sabah and you're very familiar with Sabah you're based there anyway do you feel that these clusterings that you mentioned should be uh, further looked at and see how they can be improved on and see with 
whether or not we're going to be able to work with other clusters like you mentioned, the economy cluster and many others? Well, s some of those uh, challenges you mentioned have been long-standing ones, right? Every uh, November, December, even October, we will be looking at, we're, we're even predicting uh, uh, floods already on various parts of the country. Mm. Is there a way to go around that such that, uh, well, we, we don't have to worry about floods uh, every single year? Is, uh, uh, I, I think Zahid would have his uh, job laid out uh, for him in, in terms of, uh, as you say, getting a group of uh, other ministers, other ministries, uh, the public works ministry, for example, the transport ministry and, and, and so on, to see whether we could uh, better get a grip on this uh, flooding problem. Because we, we, we would think it's because it's heavy rain, it's monsoon and so on, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes, well, it, it's heavy rain, but yeah. uh, because you cut down too many trees, therefore, you know, there's a lot of mudslide, which then uh, sumbat the river and mm, the, the mm. water could not flow out and mm. so on. Now, um, one, that, one, yeah. one item that I looked at is mm. the amalgamation of two ministries, mm -hmm. environment and water, with that of natural resources. Now it becomes the environment and climate change ministry. Do you have high hopes for this particular one? I do, and if I remember correctly, it's Nick Na, uh, Nasmi who That's is right. handling it, right? My very good friend and a very capable, uh, hopefully, minister. Uh, and, and, and I think Malaysia is quite forward-looking since uh, Yobi In's uh, time, and now with Nick Nasmi taking over, I think we, we should uh, play a very leading role in terms of uh, combating climate, uh, uh, climate change here. Uh, uh, the amalgamation is CASA, Kementerian Air dan Sekita, and Kementerian Tenaga dan Sumber Asli, KETSA. CASA and KETSA now mm -hmm. becomes one. The issue here is, this is not a one-man show at all. Do you feel that the, the collaboration can be done with all these ministries? Well, the, the, of course, this is also a hastily cobbled together coalition, right? It depends on how much uh, these ministers could separate their role as, uh, as politician on the one hand and their role as a uh, public executor in the in a sense of uh, various uh, policies. Uh, I have a lot of faith that uh, the, the, the Pakatan ministers should be able to do this quite well. You could see, for example, Anthony Locke, uh, he said bluntly in, my, uh, in, a, in this building, in a, a transport ministry building, don't ask me about politics. Uh, uh, then you ask me in the DAP headquarters. Uh, I hope the other coalition partners uh, uh, outside of Pakatan would adopt a similar you, attitude. You, you have had a long mm. history in terms of working on policy, on economic matters mm. as well as on mm. politics. You have served a few other prime ministers as well during your time. You've seen enough to know what works, what doesn't. Do you think that this is going to work? I have high hopes on uh, quite a few ministers. For, yeah. Um, but overall, it really depends if the government can survive that long first. <laughs> okay, okay, let's talk yeah. about that now. Because uh -huh. uh, we talked about some of the policies that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We now, we've touched a bit in terms of the personalities who, that mm -hmm. is going to do it. Mm -hmm. But the political structure remains to be fraught. We're looking at, your right, to use your own words, cobbled together. It seems like everybody wants to work together. But we have so many different factions. It's just so unbelievable. We've got the Pakatan block, we've got the BN block, we've got the GPS block, we've got the GRS and Warisan block S1, mm -hmm. which is as strangely enough as Menanjo, I'm sure it is as weird as it, as it is for yes, you as a Sabahan. Uh -huh. Do you feel like, like this is, you know, can they work towards a shared effort or shared uh, uh, or ambition to make this country work? Well, I hope they have the sense of uh, urgency. Hope is a dangerous word, yeah. Dr. O. Have you ever heard of that one? Well, I hope they have the sense of uh, urgency because uh, in addition to all these uh, political wranglings uh, which have been bringing this country down for the last two and a half years and so on, uh, well, we also have a lot of social economic uh, challenges. Uh, uh, Fadila Yusuf is supposed to be in charge of uh, sort of uh, so-called uh, lessening the gap between the very rich and very poor and, and so on. That uh, has been, uh, again, ongoing for quite some time. Uh, yes, during his time as works minister as well. Yeah, that do, it, you have some very remote parts of the country, especially in Sabah and Sarawak, uh, with uh, no electricity and no water uh, supply. So to, uh, how indeed you could uh, bring together again the works of several ministries to try to address this uh, in a creative uh, manner. 
you, you, I, I don't think you can still depend on, oh, th there's no road, uh, therefore we build some roads, it's going to cost a lot of money and so on. You need to think of more creative ways of doing it. Huh? But then when you do it uh, in a more creative manner, which typically uh, would mean uh, involving private sector, how do you prevent uh, corruption and various other goodies from uh, happening? That's also a challenge. Uh, do you feel that uh, the mm. efforts of the government in trying to rein in corruption practices and corrupt practices, for instance, the 600 billion ringgit uh, malpractice that was alleged by the Prime Minister is now uh, doubled back by a statement coming in from MACC, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, saying that they are indeed pursuing this. Do you feel that this is one way? By the way, MACC operates under the instruction of the Prime Minister. That's yes. something else that we need yes. to talk about as well. Yes. But yeah, like, you know, it is what it is. So uh, what do you think about this whole witch hunt that is currently happening? <laughs> uh, it, it really depends to a large extent on public perception. Huh? Does, uh, for, for example, 1MDB, if you, if you remember, uh, the public perception was that uh, there, there was huge corruption uh, going on. Uh, this uh, 600 billion, I think the public are still sort of in the dark as to uh, how, how, how was the money spent and so on. So at least there has to be some sort of uh, you know, like accountability, right? There, there needs to be some documents detailing how this money uh, was spent. The allegation was, of course, uh, the, the, uh, the money was somehow siphoned off. Uh, I think 600 billion is quite a lot of money to, to siphon off. Uh, We've the, seen how billions of ringgit has been siphoned off under 1MDB. Tr true. Uh, so, so let's see how it evolves. Uh, I wouldn't make a judgment yet. The uh, infrastructure is there. We have the parliamentary system uh, in place. Uh, very robust parliament, I would argue. Uh, of course, we need to talk about who's, mm -hmm. who's the speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, parliamentary sitting is going to be happening just about seven days from now. It's already 12, 13 December. You know, 19 December is going to be there. Selection of a uh, speaker. There's a lot of names. Take a pick, you know, in terms of who's going to be who. Uh, we can even set a bet after this, after the show, <laughs> on who you think is going to be the speaker. But generally speaking, there are parliamentary select committees. There's a Dewan Negara uh, in terms of how they can play their role. There's so many institutions that are in place. Mm. Do you feel that parliamentary integrity and institution can be further strengthened under this administration? Oh, yeah. If any administration, of course, this administration, what I mean is a pakatan led uh, administration. As you mentioned, uh, they are going to strengthen the roles of all these uh, essentially parliamentary committees. So these committees are going to uh, play, a, I would say, supervisory, but uh, at least there will be watchdogs uh, as to how certain government departments and ministries uh, would uh, function. This will be akin to the, the British and American systems, uh, whereby you have this uh, sort of parliamentary committee. Sometimes they will call upon the ministers to give them uh, briefings. Sometimes they will grill the ministers and so on. I would love to see some of these uh, ministers being grilled by... In public? Parli yeah. On that's right. Mind, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So we become C-SPAN of sorts. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's the point, uh, right? C-SPAN is the most boring channel on the planet. Yeah. But generally speaking, everybody who watches it... Oh, oh that's how I learned about politics. Uh, C-SPAN <laughs> and C-SPAN too. One is the US House, the other is US Senate. But uh, that's how we learn. <laughs> we have to educate the public about integrity system. Okay. Uh, we will uh, uh, pause our conversation uh, for now. Uh, we will still continue to have our conversation with Dr. O. A. Sun of the Pacific Research Centre uh, tomorrow because this is a very robust conversation so do stay on with us. Also, if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the events and, and activities and the conversations that are currently happening, do check all our resources on astrohourn.com, also available on all Astro Hourn digital platforms. For now, I'm signing off. My name is Ibrahim Sani. Catch you tomorrow with Dr. O. A. Sun.